quiet in here? I gotta be honest. It's easy to think about peace as a bubble. Ignoring the world so that you can chill out and get a little you time. Or, or maybe you think of peace as a simple agreement. You do your thing, I do mine. Then we don't have to worry about each other's problems or the ways we're different from each other. Or you might see peace as a big grand thing. General, this treaty officially ends all wars. But true peace doesn't look like any of that. True peace is messy. It takes hard work and creativity. It says, how can I listen to you first before I speak? It says, how can I learn what it's like to walk in your shoes before I try to fix it? How can we get creative to find a way through? See, when you do the hard work of making peace, others can see God at work in you. That's why making peace is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship, it's about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. everybody, it's me, Jacob, and today you're gonna help me solve a mystery. 
the case of the mysterious envelope. Dun, dun, dun. What do you think it is? Is it a, a thank you gift? A prank? A peace offering? Actually, peace is what we're talking about today. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. But that doesn't get me any closer to finding out what's inside this package. I feel like I should be wearing gloves for this. Yeah. Monkey bridge? What's a monkey bridge? A few twigs and some string, but no instructions. <gasps> Another mystery. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, clearly this is a bridge building kit. Well, maybe the sticks are the decking, but how do I, maybe I'm supposed to weave it together. This doesn't make any sense. I gotta get creative. I gotta think outside the box to find a solution. Actually, that's exactly what someone in today's story did. Now, how do you build a monkey bridge? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. God had promised David would be king, but for now, King Saul ruled Israel. David lived his life on the run, followed by a group of misfits who had become friends and servants. One day, they arrived in the desert of Paran, near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal, who owned 3,000 sheep. We'll set up camp here, men. At first, Nabal's servants didn't know what to think. Too many strangers around these parts. We've had food and sheep go missing. But David's men were honorable. They didn't try to steal from the shepherds. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from any harm. Stay as long as you like, my friend. About time for sheep shearing, isn't it? Oh, yes. Nabal will hold a grand feast when it's all over. Your men have helped us, so they should share in the celebration. David called for 10 of his men and gave them a message to send to Nabal. On it. David's messengers hurried up the mountain to Nabal's estate and were brought to stand before him. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> Nabal sneered down at the men while he continued to chew on a fine leg of mutton. David says, may you live long, may things go well with you. <laughs> Continue. Uh, he says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well and protected them. Now please be kind to my men. Please give us any food you can find for us. Nabal leapt from his seat and hurled the mutton bone across the room. Who oh, is this David? Probably a runaway servant. Why should I give bread and meat to a nobody? I had his men who come from who knows where. David's men returned to camp and delivered the news. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Men, put on your swords. We'll make Nabal wish he hadn't. At no time at all, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. It seemed there was no stopping a battle. But Nabal's wife, Abigail, was far wiser than her husband. A servant told her what he had done. David sent messengers asking for food, but Nabal shouted and was rude to them. Go on. The whole time we were near them, David's men were good to us. They, they were like a wall keeping us safe. You've got to do something now or terrible trouble will come. There's no time to waste. Abigail quickly directed her servants to gather supplies and put them on donkeys. 200 loaves of bread? Check. 
Five sheep. Check. One bushel of cooked grain. Check. A hundred cakes of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs. Check. And check. Well, you go on ahead. I'll follow. The donkeys, loaded with good food, started down the mountain. Abigail got on her donkey and followed. From the valley, David and his men were approaching. Everything we've done has been worthless. I've watched over this fellow's property, but he's paid me back evil for good. We'll wipe him out. <sighs> As David's anger grew, though, he spotted something along the path. A pack of donkeys. What's this? Well, it looks like they're carrying something. Food for a feast, I'd say. Behind the pack of donkeys, Abigail prepared for what lay ahead. I must stop this. The moment Abigail saw David, she slid off her donkey and fell face down on the ground before his feet. Please, let me speak. Let me take the blame for Nabal's actions. Abigail raised her eyes just enough to notice David's surprised face. He nodded. Don't pay attention to Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get to see your messengers, but I've brought a gift for you. Right now, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. Let the Lord deal with your enemies. Abigail rose to her feet. David and his men listened, surprised by the strength of her message. You fight the Lord's battle, so he will give your family line a kingdom that will last. He'll make you ruler of Israel. And when he does, you won't have a heavy load on your mind about killing people with no reason. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail took a deep breath and waited. David smiled. Give praise to the Lord. He sent you to find me. May he bless you for this. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. David's men unloaded the food that Abigail had brought. Go home in peace. I'll do what you have asked. Abigail made her way back up the hillside to her home. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard yet creative work of making peace. In the end, Nabal paid the high price for his foolish anger, but God blessed Abigail. The fight between Nabal and David wasn't Abigail's problem, but she didn't use that as an excuse she got involved, she acted fast, and she found a creative solution. You see, just because something isn't your problem doesn't mean you can't get involved. God has given each one of us unique talents and unique ways of seeing things. So, if you see people in a fight and you're the only one who can see a way to make peace, you should help them solve that mystery. Jesus showed us how important making peace was to him when he gave his life on the cross. We can make peace with others by being part of the solution. You can help calm an argument between two people by making them laugh. You can suggest solutions to problems that others might not see. Or if a fight looks like it might get dangerous, you can find a grown-up to help keep the peace. The one thing to remember today is this. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. So this week, be on the lookout for creative ways to build bridges between people in your small part of the world. I'm gonna have to get pretty creative myself. Here's what the bridge is supposed to look like. Mystery solved. You know, if that bridge was full-sized, I could cross an entire canyon on that one thin little rope. But first I'd need to solve my fear of heights problem. Dun, dun, dun. I'll see you next time. <laughs>